I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on probability. Now the unit on probability is never completed without understanding probabilities in the game of cards. In this video, we are going to discuss a very interesting game, which is played with three cards. It's also known as Blitz or Indian Poker. Many students are not aware of this game, so I'll take some time to explain. And then we'll find probability for each and every case. We'll also take up two questions related to poker, where five cards are distributed. So first, as you know, there are 52 cards in a deck, 13 of each kind, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king. Ace can be also placed after the king. Four suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. 26 red cards, which are hearts and diamonds. 26 black cards, which are spades and clubs. So the sample space when we are distributing three cards each, in this case, will be to draw three cards from the 52, right? So we have to draw three cards. And so it is 52 C3. So 52 C3 is going to be sample space. So when we find probability, we'll always divide by this particular number, which is 22, 100. Is that clear to you? So this is the number which goes in the denominator when we divide, okay, divide it. So these are the number of hands also. Sometimes the question could be, how many hands can you have when you draw only three cards from a pack of 52? There could be 22, 100, 100 hands, right? 22,100 hands. Now we will consider the probability of following hands in the game of three cards. So when you get three cards in your hand, we just call it a hand, hand of three cards. And as I said, we'll extend it to poker, uh, where five cards are distributed with two examples. So the three cases which are shown here are in the rank wise. If you get trade, three of one kind, right? all aces, all kings, or all queens, or all twos. This is called trail, and this is considered to be of the highest rank. Next to that is a flash with a sequence. Same color and in order, right? Ace, king, queen could be an order. Ace, two, three is also considered an order. Two, three, four, four, five, six, and so on. Of the same color, so that is ranked as the second. Then we have a sequence which is not of the same color. So you can see that this is kind of mixed up. In the first case, we have all of hearts. Similarly, we could have all three of clubs, spades, or diamonds. Now, this is called the color. So let me share with you uh, three more, which are considered to be pretty high in ranking. So the fourth position is of color, all of the same color, all of the same, uh, you know, like diamonds could be all Hearts, but not in a sequence or not with a pair, right? Now we'll talk about a pair here. We have two sevens, two A's, two kings, something like this. This is fifth in the rank and it's called a pair. Then if nothing of the above is there, then we just match with the highest card. In this case, the highest card is king. So that is of the lowest rank when you're distributed three cards, right? It's also uh, treated as Indian poker. Teen Patti we call in Hindi, and it's a very popular game. Now let's see how to find the probability of these events. So we'll begin with the pair itself. When I say pair, that means we have two of the same kind. So let's say double, double, right? So DD and A is a different card. So in that case, what is really happening is we are actually distributing three cards. And we need to get a pair means the same kind, right? So there are, as you know, 13 of the kinds, right? So first thing is from, you have to select which one. So here, as I've shown here, pair of seven, it could be pair of one, two, three, four, right? 13 of them. So 13 choose one is the kind which we are first selecting. And then from that kind, you know, for every kind, we have four cards each, right? Of different suits. So we will choose suits. So it could be any two of those four. So that is how we fill in these two positions, right? So that belongs to 13 of any. And from that, we are going to choose 
4 you can also write like this 4 choose 2 correct so that gives you the first two positions now in the third position we should have some other card and definitely it is not from the kind which we selected right and therefore we have to select now from 12 and any one card from 12 will do now that particular card when you select of the kind let us let us say it is a number a is two a is two three four and in this case not seven in that case that could be of any suit so there are four combinations for that so 12 c1 times 4 c1 gives you the position uh, how many of those kinds can occupy the third position product of these that is the combinatorics torics basic rule of multiplication right so these are selected in a sequence in this way and so their product represents the total number of favorable options and when you divide this by 15 c3 15 choose 3 you get your answer which comes out to be 0 0.1694 so around 16 percent chances are there of getting a pair which is not bad now let's look into the second option we call it a color sequence right we call it a color sequence also in the terminology of poker you can call it a straight flush correct and the one which i have shown here is also called royal flush correct ace king and queen guy right of course in poker you have five cards in three cards you can have only three so for three cards this becomes a royal flush well we'll talk about the color sequence in general it could be four five six seven eight nine of any color uh, i mean the suit which could be diamonds spades hearts or clubs so that is what we are looking into so what we have here is you know there are four suits so it could be of any of those four suits and how do we get a sequence let's try to understand this now if i have ace two three then that forms a sequence correct similarly another sequence will be two three four right and then we could have a sequence which is three four five so like this how many sequences can we have well the last one will be queen king and ace right ace could be placed on the other side now queen is 12th right so one two three four you know ace king queen jack so after 10 we have jack queen king right so so jack is 11 queen is 12 and king is the 13th card in our sequence so that means we in all have 12 sets of these right so these are the 12 sets now these 12 sets could be of any particular suit four suits right so 12 times 4 gives us all the options divided by 52 c3 which is our sample space and that gives you an answer which is 0 0.0021719 pretty low do you see that just about you know 0 0.2 percent so that is the uh, significance of getting this particular card it's a very high ranking card next to trail okay now let's look into the other combination we call this as a color flush all three of the same suit now we'll look into the probability of getting all three cards of the same suit in a game of blitz where three cards are dealt to each player from a deck of 52 we'll exclude the sequences in this case very important we have already considered the sequences if you get a color sequence we'll treat it as an example to the second ranking card in our sequence right in a series of poker right so now let's talk about the color now color means you could choose one of the four colors right so we have four suits to begin with so those are four possibilities you could also write this as 4c1 correct so you select one of those four and once you do that then you have to select all the three cards from that particular suit and that gives you uh, the combination 13 choose three right so all of the three cards of that now from this you need to exclude what <laughs> exclude the sequence part right and as we understand there are 12 of each card within the sequence so you take away those 12 right now so you take away those 12 and these 12 are of four different colors so you could write in this particular fashion correct another way of writing the same thing will be four times uh, 13 c3 and from here we can take away four uh, 
right? And then we, we could take four comma, what I'm trying to say is um, minus 12, and then we could take four comma. We could write like this also, correct? Because four are each suits. So considering the cards themselves, you can choose all combinations of 13C3, right? But from those, take away the ones which form a sequence, correct? Which is 12 of them. And then since these are our four different suits, multiply by four. So that is how we are going to do it. So either way, you could write in the numerator, the denominator is 52C3. And you can now do the calculation, which results into 0 0.0495927. So around 5%. So 5% chances are there to get a curve. Now let's move on and take the other option, which is for us, a sequence. Now this is a sequence which is not, we'll exclude the color sequence this time. Okay, right. Now can you tell me, what is the probability in a three card game, which is also known as Blitz, that you will get a sequence, which is like shown here. Perfect. So as you can understand, there are 12 sets of sequences which we'll always get. Now from these 12 sets, we have to exclude what? We have to exclude the color sequence, right? Because we're treating that as a much higher ranking card, right? This comes next to that. Perfect. So what we've done here is we know there are 12 of these. Now there are three positions where we can fill these cards. Now these could be amongst any four sequence. Uh, this could be like hearts. It could be of uh, spades. Okay. It could be diamonds or it could be clubs. Okay, so out of these four, we there are four types. So that is, we could fill a four cube, but if they are falling in the same kind, that will be only one option, all hearts, for example, correct? All hearts, for example. So that will be only one out of these, right? So, so four cube minus four will give us that particular number, right? Each one of them. And so we get 12 times four cube minus four in our numerator, and we divide by... 12 choose 3 to get the answer. So I hope this is absolutely clear, right? So as you understand, we have 12 sets of these sequences. These could be in any of the four colors for these three positions, right? So that is how you get 4 to the power of 3, correct? And one in which out of these, it's all of the same color. Those will be four of each kind, right? One, one of each kind, correct? So that is that is minus 4 and then you multiply by 12 because there are 12 sets of these and you get your numerator and you can calculate the answer correct 0 0.032579 which is around 3.2 percent pretty low but it's a very high ranking card now the highest ranking card is of course the tray three of the same kind good so how do you get the probability of this well you have to select one of those 13 kinds, that is the first thing, and then all the three from that particular kind. So that is as simple. And then divide by the total combination, 1 over 425 gives you that jackpot number, which is 0 0.00235294. So 0.23% are the chances of getting a trail in the game of Indian poker, a three-guard game, or blitz. Now, here is another very interesting most of the time, what you land up with a card, which is not a pair, which is not a sequence, which is not a color or a flush, not a straight, as you have seen in previous cases. So what is that? So something which is not all of that, what is the probability of that? So we're going to now see how do we exclude all those combinations and then write down the probability of the most frequently received card in the game of poker. Okay. So in this case, the question here again is, we're looking into the three card game, not pair, not sequence or a flush, correct? So probability of getting a three card, which are all different, not of the same color and are not in a sequence. In the, in the game of Blitz, where three cards are dealt to each player from a deck of 52 cards. Okay, now in this particular case, how do we go about? We know as far as the all combinations are concerned, we know that is we have choices of 52 out of 
52 choose 3 that is the total combination still because you are dealing three cards now let's look into how do we deal them so well we have to have three different numbers kinds three different kinds we have 13 of all so let us select three different kinds once you do that so we know that all kinds are different so in that case we have avoided the pairs correct so no two cards can be of the same kind that means the number like seven seven eight eight and so on so three of different kinds and there are 13 kinds in all now out of these kinds they could be like arranged in a sequence so we have to avoid those 12 also correct so minus 12 is to avoid the sequence part of it now all the above kinds could be of four different suits and that is how we get these four cube now out of this four cube there will be four which will be of the same suit so we have to avoid the same suit also so avoiding all those things multiplying with the number of cards which we are dealing with we get the numerator which is 13 choose 3 minus 12 times 4 cube minus 4 and then divided by the total number of ways of dealing these three cards from the pack of 52 is 52 choose 3 and we get an answer which is 0 0.7438914 so around 74 percent times what you get is something which we are only comparing the highest card right so that is a most frequently dealt card in a game of cards now that is the kind of all the combinations which you could get in indian poker which we also call team patti now let's take up a few examples for the the poker game which is dealt with five cards here's another video where i've dealt in all the cases about uh, 10 of these cases of the poker game when we'll talk about the single pair double pair right and uh, straight flush and all those things uh, but that's a different video now here there are two questions i'd like you to on the knowledge which you got from here answer these questions so question number seven is you randomly draw five cards from a deck of 52 cards what is the probability of getting one spade and four diamonds so what you have to get is one spade and four diamonds correct so what is the probability of getting that so you can actually pause the video answer this particular question and then look into my suggestions so we need one spade and four diamonds right okay so i'm just giving you time to write the answer how do we do it well one spade is 13 choose one there are 13 spades as you know so 13 choose one gives you one spade and you want to choose four diamonds we we have 13 diamond cards so choose four out of them and total number of combinations when you're dealing with five cards from a pack of 52 is 52 choose five so divide by that and that gives you the probability of getting one spade and four diamonds and that is 0 0.00357643 correct so that is how you can find this particular probability now here is another question where we are dealing with a very important case which says you randomly draw five cards from a deck of 52 cards what is the probability of getting at least one card from each kind you have to get one card from each kind you know there are four uh, each suit suit right you know there are four suits so that means one will be of two cards will be of the same suits right that is what it is so, so that's how it is so let us say one of each kind okay uh, so that is 13 c1 13 c1 and 13 c1 perfect so you get one of each kind now uh, for one kind one sorry for one suit one of each suit right one of each suit so it should be one of each suit uh, so you get 13 uh, choose one 13 choose one 13 choose one but well, for one particular suit you'll have to select two let's say diamonds you select two right so 13 c2 correct well if you select two from the diamonds you could have selected two from hard spades or clubs also that is why we'll multiply by four because we have four choices for that particular suit and that is how we get our numerator divided by the denominator which is 52 choose 5 we get our answer and that is a card which is not a very high ranking card and it has about 26 percent probability 
So I hope you understand this. So I've taken a very important test example, which is based on probability of finding some cases in poker hands. Now poker is a game of cards in which five cards are distributed from a deck of 52 cards, a standard deck of 52 cards. We'll take actually 12 questions in this particular video discussing all possible possibilities which I have seen so far in previous test papers on this particular topic. So that is going to really help you a lot. You can learn more from me and discuss the strategy by writing to me on the given email. Well, as you know, the poker hand is five cards in your hand when you randomly pick five cards from a deck of 52. Now, in this deck of 52, some students may not know clearly, we do have 13 kinds of cards, Ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, and King. As shown here, we have shown a hand which has 13 cards, all of diamonds, right? So, well, that is not a poker hand, but these are the 13 cards of one particular suit, which is diamonds. We have actually four suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. So 13 times four is 52. Hearts and diamonds are red in color. So 26 red cards and 26 black cards, which represent the spades and club suits, 13 of each. Now, when we are distributing five cards out of 52, then in a sample space, because we're talking about probability. So the denominator will be total number of ways of selecting five cards randomly from a deck of 52. So that gives us a choice of 52 choose 5. Now 52 choose 5 is 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. And that value is 2598960. So that is going to be the denominator in all the cases. So I've just given this right on the top. So most of the examples, we see a probability of doing that, but also the numerator part is also the number of ways or the arrangements or the choices in which you can get that particular combination. Perfect. So this question could also help students who are still working on combinations. Now, it is really a case of combination because we are selecting five cards and five cards in our hand. It doesn't matter in which order they have come, right? And therefore, it is a case of combination. And in all the solutions, what you will see is N choose R. Perfect. Now, with that, let's move forward. So when we say that the number of outcomes to draw five cards from 52 is 52 choose five and we get a value that also indicate to you that these are also the number of hands for one person with five cards right so sometimes the question could be how to find the number of hands when five cards are chosen from a deck of 52 as far as the question goes at the very beginning i should tell you without giving you a long lecture then what are we going to discuss? These are the different kinds of combination of five cards in the poker game. And we are looking into their probabilities, right? We could get a hand where we are interested in finding number of ways or the probability of getting, let us say, a straight, a flash, a double or a triple or a full hand. So all those combinations will be considered in this particular video. So let's begin with having a picture of questions which we are going to discuss. So we'll find the probability for following hands in the game of poker. So single pair, two pairs, a triple, full house, that means a triple and a pair, four of a kind, flush. When we say flush, it means five of the same suit. Now here we have some variations. When we have five of the same suit, we are ex 
excluding the ones which form the straights, right? So royal flush is the one where you get 10 jack, queen, king, and ace of one color, right? That's the royal flush. We have a straight flush and straight normal flush. And then we'll talk about none of the above. That is very tricky. So getting a normal hand, which is 50% probable, you don't get any of those options normally in the game. So that is the none of the above case. We'll also look into specific cases of finding a probability of getting one spade card and four diamonds card, or we'll take up a case where we'll look into at least one card from each suit, right? So these are the 12 questions which we are going to discuss. Let's begin with the very first one, which is to find the probability of single pair in the game of poker in which five guards, cards are randomly drawn from a fair deck of 52 cards. Now, each card is distinct. There are 52 distinct cards, right, which we are talking about, and four suits, 13 of each kind. Now, when we say each kind, we mean ace, which represents one also, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These are the 10. And then Jack, Queen, and King. So there are 13 cards, right? Now, we need to figure out the probability of getting a single pair. What does it really mean? It really means that we have to fill in these five spaces. And in one of these five spaces, we have a single pair. So double we are calling. So we're just saying D and D. <clears throat> Now, that is the restriction for us. So let's think about how do we get two of the same kind? That is what we have to look into. Perfect. So what I've done here is written a neat format. And this format should help you to understand all the following examples and also easily get solution to similar questions, right? So first thing is we have to choose the kind of the card, right? So it could be like, as shown here, two eights, let us say, right? So we have to choose a kind. So one of the 13 is what we have to choose. So 13C1 is what we have chosen. So one of those 13, in this case, shown in the figure, is two eights. Well, so that is 13 out of 1. It could be any of those 13 numbers. So 13 choose 1 is 13, correct? So this, you know, you understand 13 choose 1 is actually the number 13 itself. So if we have a choice of choosing from the 13s, right? Now, if you choose one, for example, here, we have taken eight. In that case, you have to pick up two of those eights out of four available. So we have four of that kind, one of hearts, one of spades, one of diamonds, and one of clubs. So four choose two gives you, you can choose any two of those four two because you just need a double, right? Okay, so that gives you another factor, which is 4 choose 2. Now, we are left with the positions 3, 4, and 5. Now, in the positions 3, 4, and 5, you cannot choose the number or the kind which you have already taken. So, in that case, you are left with 12 only. Now, from those 12, you have to choose 3, right? You cannot choose from the number or the kind which you have already taken, right? So from those 12, you have to choose three, but only one of each kind, you understand? So 12C3 tells you that you choose three other numbers apart from eight. In this case, it is king, nine, and ace as shown in the figure. Perfect. Now, these, you have to choose different numbers, and therefore, we have only of one kind, 4C1. There are four of each kind. If you pick up two, then we have two doubles. It violates our assumption here. That is, we are working only for one double, correct? So you have to choose only of one kind from those three which you have taken. So 4C1, 4C1, 4C1 for all the three gives you this factor, which is 4 choose 1 Q. So when you multiply all three of them, that that gives you the possible sample 
solution, right? The answer, the NA value, right? So when you're talking about probability, in probability for any particular condition, here we are using a double. In that case, we have to see how much are favorable cases and what is the sample space. So sample space in all our examples will be 52 choose 5. And in this particular case, the product of all this will be the favorable cases. So calculating that, we get our answer, which is this number 0 0.422569. You can multiply them all, divide by 52 choose 5 to get the probability, right? So around 42% is the probability of getting a double in case of a game of poker. Is that clear to you? We're going to adopt a similar method to answer the rest of the questions. So example number two here is two pairs, right? Sort of four, we have two pairs. Fifth is a different card. Now, what are you going to do? Well, again, we have to choose two of a kind, right? Two different numbers from 13. It could be any two, right? So that means we again have these five spaces to fill. Now here, we are saying two similar, right? So these and then another. So there are two pairs, two double pairs. That is what we're trying to figure out. Probability of getting a hand which has a double pair. So the question for you here is, Probability of double pair in the game of poker in which five guards, cards are randomly drawn from a fair deck of 52. So basically, you have to choose two from those 13. So 13 choose two is your first factor. Perfect. Once you do that, then what is, we have to choose two of each kind and each kind is four, right? So four choose two gives you whether you're picking up spades, hearts, diamonds, or clubs, right? So four choose two. So we are done with these four cards. Now let's look into the fifth card. Now in the fifth card, it should not be those which you have already taken. So from 13, two are out. We are left with 11 and you have to choose only one. Now you have four choices of choosing that one. And so times four choose one. That becomes a numerator in this case, we know what the denominator is, 52 choose 5. And so when you work it out, you get around 0 0.0475, which is just 4.7%. You see? So we had around 40% to get one pair, but just 4.7% to get two pairs. Right? Okay. So here we have shown two pairs, queens and sevens, right? Now let's move on and take the next example. So next example is to get a triple, right? To get a triple, three of one kind and some other two cards, right? So again, what is the strategy? Well, from the 13 cards, you have to choose one kind for which you have to pick up three. So 4C3, right? So 13C1, 4C3 gives you the first factor of the triple. The other two cards, have to be different. So from 12 remaining, you have to choose two and one of each kind. So 4C1, 4C1, which gives you 4C1 square. I hope you're getting the idea of how to get this numerator, which is the favorable cases in our case for finding the probability. Total number of options remain the same. You're choosing five out of 52. So when you work this out, you get 0 0.0211 to 8, which is almost 2.1%, right? It is further reduced. Now, let's look into the fourth example where we're talking about full house. When I say full house, it means a triple and a double, all five in kind of pairs, right? So triple and a double. How are you going to solve it? I'd like you to pause the video now since you understand the strategy. We have to choose out of 13 Two numbers, right? Two of kinds. So 13 choose two should be our first thing, right? So, and then one of them is going to be three. So this will be 13 choose two. Let me correct this. 13 choose two. 
So 13 choose 2. Correct. So we are choosing two items here. Now, in that case, okay, we'll go with one and we'll do the way it has been. So in this case, let us choose one of them first. And so we have 13 choose 1. So we have chosen the one which we want to be a triple, for example. So let's go with this. 13 choose 1. And once we choose that, out of the four available of that kind, we have to take 3. So 4 choose 3, right? So we got 13 choose 1 times 4 choose 3. Now, from 13 kinds, we have already taken 1. We left with 12. So let's choose one of those 12s and two of them. So 4 choose 2 gives us the other factor to be multiplied. And that is our favorable cases, right? So everywhere what we are writing here to find the probability is the probability or whatever we're trying to figure out is ratio of favorable cases to the sample space. The sample space, to remind you, is 52 choose 5. And in this case, the favorable cases are 13 choose 1 times 4 choose 3. That is for the triple times 12 choose 1, 4 choose 2. That is for the double. And when you calculate this, you get 0 0.001441. So even lesser probability, right? So that is how we see that the probability really decreases. So the chances of winning with that card are pretty high, right? Now, example five here is we need to have four of a kind. So I've written F, F, F four times, and the fifth card is different. So again, we have to choose one kind, which is 13 choose one, and four out of four. There are those possibilities. So that gives you the first term of f f and f four of one kind now the fifth one has to be from the remaining 12 12 choose one and we have to pick up only one card so four choose one correct so that is how we are going to get the next factor that becomes now the numerator the favorable cases 13 choose one times four choose four times 12 choose one times four choose one divided by the total number in our case of selections which is 15 choose 5 and this gives you an answer which is 0 0.000240 <clears throat> now let's take up the next example which is called the royal flush well what is a royal flush well we have only four royal flush it is ace king queen jack and 10 so these are the five cards which we treat as a royal flush and they could be of spades, right? So they could be of spades, they could be of hearts, and they could be of diamonds, or they could be of clubs. So they could be of any one of these four kinds. And therefore, we have only four options for this royal flush. So we have four in the numerator divided by the choices, which are 52 choose five. So this is called the royal flush, right? Next. So it is a straight with the highest straight, which you can get in the same color. So it is called the royal flush. So whenever we use the word flush, it means all of the same kind, right? Suit has to be same. Now, example number seven here is a straight flush. Straight flush really means that like ace, two, three, two, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like this, right? The runners the sequence elements, right? So where the numbers are running are uh, consecutive numbers. So those kinds are straight flush. Now, when we're talking about straight flush, we'll kind of exclude the royal flush from it since, oh, you know, that's a higher card. So why to mix it up? So now the question is, what is the probability of getting five cards of the same of a suit forming straight, excluding royal flush, in the game of poker in which five cards are randomly drawn from a fair deck of 52 cards. So we'll actually exclude those four cases from these. Well, how do we get a straight flush? So straight flush also means same color, right? Same, I should say suit, right? So we have four suits, correct? As you know, we have four different suits, but how do you get flush? So we could get as one, 
two, three, four, five, because we have a set of five cards, we could have two, three, four, five, six. Likewise, the last combination starts with 10, jack, queen, king, and ace, right? So those are the ones. So you can clearly see that we have one, two, up to 10, right? So we have up to 10. So that is what we have. And since we have four suits, so we have four times 10 total combinations. The royal flush, four of them will deduct them, correct? So we have four times 10 minus four. Now this minus four is because of the royal flush being excluded. So total straight flush without the royal flush will be four times 10 minus four, perfect? So that is how we get the numerator possible cases. Divide by 15 choose 5 and that gives you a very small probability. 0. 0.00038517 when you calculate this particular number. So I hope that is absolutely correct. So basically you understand how do we get a straight. So in a particular suit you can always get 10 straights. Do you see that? Since we have four suits, we get 40 straights. Out of these 40, four are the royal straights and we remove them. So we got 36 of them. So this type, we have 36 divided by 52, choose five to get the probability. So I hope that is absolutely clear. Now let's move on and take the next example where we talk about a flush without straight, right? That flush means all of the same suit. So now the restriction is to choose one of the four suits. Since there are four, so four choose one gives us that number. Now once you have chosen that, since every number has to be taken from that particular suit, since shown here is diamonds, so we have picked up all diamond cards. That really means you have to choose five out of those 13 cards of diamonds, correct? So 13 choose five is what gives you those particular flush cards, same kind in the hand of five. Is that clear to you, right? Now, in this particular case, we have to remove the straights, correct? So it is kind of important to understand that how many straights do we have? We are only interested in the random cards, not organized as as pairs or organized in some other ways, correct? So we have to remove those which are consecutive, which are coming together, correct? The straights. So you cannot have pairs in the same color, of course, but you could have the running or the sequences. As you know, there are 40 of these, right? So 36 plus four makes it 40. Taking away 40 from our flush, all kinds, will give us the numerator favorable cases for this particular case where we are looking into the probability of getting all the five cards from the same suit right and we are excluding these traits in that because the traits with the same flush or the color is a much higher ranking perfect so we get our answer in this case at point zero zero one nine six five four so i hope that is clear now let's take the next example where we're talking about a straight. Now when we say a straight in this case, we'll exclude those which are including the same color or which are the royal flush, correct? So we'll include those ones. So the question here is probability of getting a five cards in a sequence excluding straight flush, correct? So we'll exclude all those. So that means, as I was saying, we could have a set of five in consecutive running numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. The last one starts with 10. So clearly, you can see that first starts with 1, then the 10th is the last one. So we have 10 of these kinds, clearly, right? Now, since we have four suits, 40 in all, correct? That is what the concept is. So we can see that there are 10 straights, correct? And each kind has a card of from four suits, correct? Because it could have been every card there in between in these 10 straights 
could be from one of the four suits. It could be from spades, hearts, diamonds, or clubs, right? So that being said, 40 into 4, choose 1 to the power of 5. So every space here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we know we, ha we are having 10 of these, but at every place, we have a choice of choosing any four of them. Do you see that? Four of a different suit because these traits are not of the same color, right? Not of the same suit. They are not flush traits. But in general, so in general, the choice is four. That gives you four to the power of five right there. So 10 times four to the power of five gives you all possible traits, all possible traits, correct? Now from that, we are excluding the ones which are of the same, I should say, flush, right? So 40 of those which we figured out, right? So taking that away gives us the straights which do not include the straight flush, correct? So that gives you the probability of 0 0.00392465. Now, almost the last, we are almost at the end, three more questions to go. Now we have to figure out what is the probability of getting none of these uh, complicated ones which we figured out, right? Now, that is actually more complicated. So now we look into the probability of not getting a double, not a triple, not four, not straight, not flush, none of these. A simple five cards where all are of different kinds, right? All are of different kinds and also of different suits, right? So that is kind of thing which we're now looking into. Okay, so basically we are choosing 5 out of 13. So that gives us a whole lot of choices. 5 out of 13 actually has everything in it, right? But what we need to exclude from here, we need to exclude all these traits and the flushes, correct? Both the things we need to exclude. Okay, so first, all these traits. So excluding traits means there are, for every set, there will be 10 traits, correct? If you take any particular sequence in that case there are 10 possible straights so 13 choose 5 minus 10 so these are the the probable set now we have to choose five of each place correct so in that case 4c1 every place you have to choose a card right four choices are there at each spot but these four choices we cannot take the same color right so we'll avoid the flush so this four comes from the flush which we need to subtract from the choices which we make for the suits right so when you do that you multiply it with 15 or with 13 choose 5 minus 10 to get our probable cases so the numerator here is 13 choose 5 minus 10 so that these are all the numbers which we get for random five cards not organized at all in any way as we had selected earlier before this right now from there we could have each of different color so which is four choose one and to the power of five since five spaces are being placed but it is possible that out of these there will always be four, which will be of the same suit. So that is what we call flush, right? So we have to avoid those. So minus four, and that becomes the numerator. And the denominator, you know, is 52 choose five. And that gives you the probability of none of the above, right? Do you see that? So that is what the answer is, which is almost 50%. So 50% chances of not having one of those is very clear now is that clear now let's so the game of poker has these five cards and so these are very famous questions which are always seen in test papers i hope this knowledge is going to help you in answer those questions correctly feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best